Hi, would you like to get on 10 metres or perhaps a CV bands with a three element Yagi, but you maybe don't have the space or, or can't afford a, a commercial antenna? Well, this video is about a very simple to build, a small format, three element Yagi for 10 or 11 metres, and it costs very little to build and it's very simple to make. Hope you enjoy the video. The trick with a mini horse is turning the theoretical designs into into practical build and I've found a way of producing the antenna very cheaply uh, and very simply and it can be disassembled and assembled very quickly. I don't have any permanent beam set up at home but I like the mini horse design because it means when conditions improve on 10 metres in the spring and the summer I can set up the beam very quickly, uh, use it say over a weekend and then dismantle it again uh, and put it away. Now on paper the antenna is just three bits of wire but the trick is being able to tension and support the wires so they're all in line with each other and uh, don't sag or droop. So here we have the beam modelled in some antenna design software. I found with the 6 metre Yagi uh, the software showed its resonance a bit higher than where I wanted it in reality when I built the thing and uh, tuned it in. Uh, it was actually correct to start with so the modeling software uh, didn't reflect reality 100%. So here, um, rather than 28.4 megahertz, I'm going to put 29.6, which is the top end of 10 meters, the um, FM calling frequency, made of copper wire and put at a height of seven meters, which is achievable, uh, that's good to height. And if we calculate, um, that design these are the far field plots with a bubble or RF this is a bubble in the direction we're pointing the beam and this is a typical um, three element Yagi uh, pattern from the side so here you can see the the RF going in the direction we want uh, and down here at the low degrees uh, it's about 3.7 dBi um, so that's somewhere around about um, 1.82 dB of gain uh, and that increases up to here, uh, which is about 11.5 dBi, uh, which is about 9, 9 or so dB of gain. So there's gain to be had in this direction, varying varying heights. Uh, there's rejection on the back of the beam, which is what you want. Um, there's a little lobe there, so you can still hear stations, and then once you've got their attention, turn around and point your RF in their way. Uh, but this is useful for... Uh, rejecting any any local interference so if you're pointing away from a house um, that'll reject a lot of the noise of the house so typical three element Yagi pattern there so other than the wire and a little bit of fishing line which you probably have already uh, the whole antenna is made of plastic and comes to less than 15 pounds here in the UK the centre of the antenna is made up of these two bits of waste pipe, 40mm and 32mm. Uh, the 32 just fits neatly inside the 40 and as well as making the centre of the antenna, it doubles up as a stub mast. And the arms of the antenna are made up of three sections of 25mm, black conduit and 20mm. So I've cut off a metre section of the two pipes, clamped them both together, uh, drilled a pilot hole uh, through both sides and then use the wider 25 mil to drill the hole for the spreaders. Then with the larger drill bit, it's a case of following the pilot hole on one side, uh, through to the other side and, and out. So once you've tidied the hole, you can push one of the spreaders through to help hold it steady. So it's just a case of drilling another pilot hole uh, further down the pipe at 90 degrees to the original one and drilling through again, uh, making sure if the drill grabs to stop and uh, cut with a sharp knife. So if you're drilling straight, you should have uh, something that looks like this. Uh, the mini horse is actually a rectangle, but I've drilled these holes at 90 degrees to form a square because the spreaders will bend and tension the wires uh, and keep everything nice and tight. So nothing special uh, required wire-wise. I'm using this um, mains flex 0.75 mil, uh, just what you have spare. So these are the measurements for the 10 meter band, the SSB portion of the band, and I've also shown the CB uh, measurements in red as well. I'm going to start with the CB sizings and go from there, and I'm using insulated wire, so uh, other measurements might differ if it's bare copper. So all I need to do now is solder the ends onto that middle wire uh, to form the driven element, cut the centre and make a connector for the coax. 
And speaking of coax, to stop common mode currents coming back down the coax and upsetting the radiation pattern of the antenna, plus also um, possibly causing interference in the shack, I've made this common mode choke, which is five turns of RG58 on a four and a quarter inch former. I used a, a roll of duct tape for mine. Uh, this just needs attaching to the centre of the antenna and the end uh, attaching to a PL uh, plugged so we can feed it back to the shack. Ideally, a Type 61 ferrite would be better, uh, but uh, this is a cheap build and this is a simple, simple way to achieve some form of choking. I'll put a link in the description about chokes and ferrites. The first thing to do with the plastic conduit is mark the centre of the 3 meter 25 mil sections and cut a groove in the ends of the 20 mil sections uh, and then you've got all the elements ready uh, to start the build. Here in the early part of the build we've got the side of the antenna tensioned with fishing line and we're just measuring across the front to check the 373 width. And with the front and rear elements uh, in place you need to line up and sight up the two wires so you know where to make the centre section just there. So here you can see I've added the uh, choke to the stub mast, added a PL259 plug and connected the uh, coax to the centre element uh, with a few connectors and bolts. And as you could see I tied the centre element to the stub mast uh, just temporarily while I tune the antenna and then I'll make that third hole. So I was aiming for the middle of the CB band in 11 metres and then I was going to shorten all the measurements for the 10 metre band and I seem to have landed bang in the middle, um, around about 28 megahertz. So if I go down into 27, you can see the SWR rising at the bottom of 27 and then if I go up to the top of 11 metres into the amateur band. This is the SSB portion, so around about one and a half. And then once you go all the way up, um, it's out then. So I need to just shorten the elements a little tiny bit to get up from this 27, 28 borderline, just to push it a bit higher, around about there. So it probably only take a few small cuts. So we'll see how I get on. So it doesn't take much at these high frequencies to trim. That was trim one and that's trim two. There the uh, reflector and director and that was the dipole. I took a little bit less off the dipole. Um, so here we are now. Um, if I drop down. So there's the bottom of the 10 metre band. And you can just see the dip there. They're about 28.4, 28.5. And if I go down, there you can see it's gone out now, if I go into the CB area. Apologies for the shaking, it's a bit cold. Um, and there you can see, 10 metres is just too wide to cover. But down this end, I'm happy with that. The uh, mini horse, hopefully, is a success. So this is a mini horse uh, post tuning, so it's still in rough ready form. I need to drill the stub mass to take the centre boom. Now I know where it's positioned. Um, and you can see the ends. Where I've got fishing line, just to tension up. And the fishing line supports the ends of the centre fed element. And I've also put this extra line. I didn't need this on the six metre, but I've put one over the top to the side just to keep the centre element from, from sagging. So it's all in a line, all the elements are lined up apart from these returns. Obviously they go up at an angle but they don't seem to affect it that much. Um, so now it's a case of dismantling it and then making it so it can be reassembled quite quickly uh, and there's a knack to that. Uh, you can attach I'll show it at some point, either in the end of this video or another video. Basically, you attach one end of the wire permanently 
uh, and leave the other end loose and then as you push that through the centre and it's all labelled up so you know what goes where you've got one where you're already attached and you just whip the other one round attach these uh, it's very quick to, to set up a fan on the six metre one um, so uh, I'll tidy it up and then uh, show how easy it is to, to put together so in part two I'll show you the finer details of the build uh, I'll give you the exact lengths of those poles and the wires that I used and I'll show you the way to set it up uh, so you can dismantle and assemble it very quickly and to ensure you don't miss the follow-up video if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell you'll be notified when it's released